Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Another week in the hobby, another week in the podcast. Obviously, a little bit of a uh, different format today. I'm going to try to do this um, this week's episode in the uh, screen uh, capture mode. I think this will give me a little bit more like flexibility and uh, help me context- uh, contextualize things a little bit better in terms of just some of my overall like activity and that kind of thing. So just not having to pull out, you know, all these different cards and, you know, some of these I don't have anymore, but like some of them kind of help tell the stories of, of what I'm doing or, you know, decisions I've made and that, and that type of thing. So, so yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, Apologies. Also, I am a bit sick, so, um, you probably be able to hear that in my voice and I'll probably, uh, might struggle through a little bit of this in terms of just, um, you know, just talking and and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, definitely apologize for that, but we're going to carry on. So this week uh, I had two big, um, two big pickups. Well, not cards that I bought like this week, but cards that I'm going to talk about this week that I've picked up over the last probably three weeks or so. Um, the first pretty significant purchase is this um, 2003 uh, Donruss Elite Peyton Manning status parallel out of 18, uh, number eight, or I think it's number eight, um, that you see there highlighted. This was a pretty significant card for me to go after. Um, I won this for about $130 at auction. Um, I think I put in a max bid around probably over 200 but... Um, it was ending sort of like past midnight. So I was like, kind of set an alarm on my phone just to make sure I woke back up or whatever. And, and I was paying attention and that kind of thing. So I was really, really happy to win it as a collector, um, not only of Peyton, but of these specific parallels as well. So, um, yeah, uh, and that kind of carries me into some of this other stuff we're going to talk about, but, um, with Peyton specifically, just like as a primary subject PC, you know, he is my favorite athlete of all time. Um, but I would say like within the context of my collection, he's, he's probably not like my best, like PC by any stretch of the imaginations. I would say, you know, if I have like six or seven primary subjects across all categories, you know, whether it's Peyton, Marvin, Shohei Otani, those types, I would say Peyton's probably probably on the lower the lower end in terms of like how I would you know classify the you know I would say I have a much better Marvin Harrison collection than I do uh, Peyton Manning collection but you know a lot of that just speaks to the fact of you know how I sort of approach the hobby in terms of I tend to I tend to lead with card type relative to subject so obviously Peyton's going to command a premium over you know people like Marvin Harrison and and Mookie Betts and, you know, Darth Vader and, and that type of thing. So it's just, uh, just you know, I want to keep collecting Peyton, obviously, and that's going to be a lot of what today's about, just in terms of, like, me finding, like, creative ways to do that. But also I don't want to be, like, competing with, like, a lot of people for, you know, for the same same types of cards and that, and that kind of thing. So, so yeah. Um, with all that being said, over here to the right you see four different uh, Peyton refractors. Um that's a 02 Bowman out of 250. That's an 08 Gold out of uh, 199. That's an 01 Gold out of 99, and that's just a second year, just base refractor. Um, and this, I, I added these just to kind of show, like you know, a lot of the stuff that I went after. I would say in sort of my oh, I would say probably like my second second stage, uh, second wave of sort of like. Peyton, you know, collecting in terms of like when I started back into the hobby, back into the hobby pretty seriously, I, you know, I was buying just like a lot of, you know, inserts and, you know, some base cards, some rookie cards, that kind of thing. Um, and then I sort of took it up to this level in terms of, all right, I want to get some more refractors, some of the shiny, you know, top scroll stuff and that type of thing. Um, but over time I've, I've let all these go. I've sold all these. I sold this one and this one quite a while ago. Uh, I just recently sold these two. Um, this one I sold at actually a pretty significant loss. Uh, the 2008, I think I paid around like 220 for that, and I think I ended up selling it for about just around 100 bucks or so. And I think that goes to show a little bit, of, just in terms of you know how the hobby has just sort of um, you know just become you know has shrunk quite a bit, and so the people that are left. Um, to buy cards like this, likely they either already have a copy because there are, you know, 199, which, you know, by, um, 
you know, by today's standards of rarity is not, you know, not super rare. Um, so it's just not as much, you know, um, not as much demand, you know, as, as there was obviously a year or two ago when I bought this or maybe, I, yeah, maybe it was a year and a half ago. Um, so yeah, that, when I bought this, I thought I had, you know, come in at a really good price point around, like, I think I paid about $230 for that, give or take. And, you know, at the time, you know, that felt, you know, just really tremendous, but, you know, to get a card like this, uh, obviously it's 10 times more rare five years, you know, earlier in his career, um, for about, you know, half the price that I paid for this one 18 months ago or whatever it was, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So, and then this is another one I sold recently, not one I really wanted to sell, but I did want to offset some costs. And I just, I sold this for basically, uh, I would say pretty close to break even on that one. Um, yeah, probably definitely lost, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks after all things considered with fees and shipping and that sort of thing. But, but yeah, um, I just got to the point eventually where I'm like, I don't, you know, the golds obviously are, are coming back down in price a little bit, just like with a lot of other things, but it's still, they're still pretty saturated in terms of, you know, demand and in terms of like people bidding on them and that type of thing. So, so I wanted to just take my overall patent collecting in a different direction. And I think over this last year or so, that's kind of what I've done. And you'll see here and, and just my football card collecting in general, not in terms of, um, not buying golds, obviously, but just kind of branching out and getting to a lot of different things. So, so let's scroll down here a little bit. Um, what you see here is, uh, these are my currently my favorite football cards that I own. And I added these here just to sort of contextualize, you know, like how this Manning will rank in terms of, in terms of this group. So over here on the left, currently uh that is my favorite uh football card not my favorite card overall i actually added the the rankings here you'll see so with this marvin this would be my number 21 overall card in my collection and that sort of speaks a little bit in terms of like where my overall football um category is just relative to, to other things so it looks like i got a little bit of work to do on that but um but for now this is my favorite football card the 2000 elite marv asp uh, aspirations out of 12 and then this Peyton card that I just bought will definitely go up pretty pretty high on the list here. Um, if this was a 2000 or a 2001 or a 99, I would say it would overtake the Marvin. But the fact that this is from the, the year 2000, um, you know, about equal levels of rarity, 12 and 18, not, not, not a big deal there. But um, just this set, that elite set from 2000 is just a lot more, just a, more significant to me than the 03 set is. So, so yeah, that kind of gives Marvin, Marvin the edge there. Um, but yeah, it's still, obviously it still jumps to, you know, really high in terms of, um, actually, I think I did this backwards. This should be, okay, this one, this edge is actually number, number two, my bad. So this Peyton, this Peyton will go here. Okay, there we go. So yeah, um, so that Peyton came in right now. It's a, you know, it's, you know, this is fluid. This can change, you know, I update these, you know, every month or so just in terms of um, where I think they are approximately. So right now I have it around 27. Um, and then these numbers here, obviously, this this is the price I paid for each card. So I paid 80 for that Marvin, 50 for that Edge. Uh, like I said, 130 for that, for that Peyton that I just won. And then this is the um, the activity cost metric here. So I've talked about this in previous episodes, but um, what I do for this is you divide the the dollar amount paid, so eighty dollars, and then you divide it by the number of cards below it in the top one hundred. So if Marvin's twenty one, obviously there's seventy nine cards below it. I think I might need to update this actually because I just kind of switched some of these around. So let's just do it here real quick. So. Um, get the calculator out, 80 divided by 79, 1.0, oh, no, that's right, 1.01. .01. So, so you can see just, the, and then this number, the activity cost is the, um, yeah, is, so it's, it just gives you an idea of like, you know, how the car, you know, how the card is priced relative to how much you like it. So obviously the worst quote unquote, um, activity the highest one here obviously is going to be this Peyton here the 2006 leaf um leaf certified materials the mirror black uh the 101 this cost 420 dollars uh it's currently ranked 28 so so you know i mean it's obviously a, 
what's the difference really between 26, 27, 28? Not much, but it just goes to show that, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money, you know, to get a great car that you really love and that type of thing. So, so yeah. Um, all right. And then uh, these two over here, um, the Marv and the Edge, these are like... Um, basically basically tied but i just i just i didn't want to leave one of them out so so yeah th those are the and you know currently number one two three so those are my top six football cards ranging from number 21 to 44 overall within the top 100 so so yeah it's interesting to me to kind of just look at how my my football collecting has evolved um obviously you see i'm still chasing some you know i've with Marv and Edge, there's obviously less competition for the gold, so I can track down, you know, most of those, or I have been able to. Peyton, you know, uh, I'm not, probably not going to be super competitive when it comes to some of his, like, really nice finest golds and that type of thing. But, you know, and for $400, um, I could definitely get a lot of, uh, you know, Bowman Chrome golds, Topps Finest golds, that type of thing. But when I see the opportunity to pick up a card like this from, a you know, a less... Um, a lower awareness set, uh, just, you know, generally speaking, that's a one of one to me, I'd rather just, I'd rather put my money in, you know, in this kind of a direction, not, not necessarily just like investment wise. I mean that too, but also, um, just more for like personally, like connecting to the cards and like collecting and that type of thing, just kind of going a little bit off the board, but you know, still getting something really, really tremendous. So, so yeah, this is currently how the the football uh, the football card PC looks stacked up next to each other. Again, just super stoked on this one. This this card's actually in really good condition too. I think it has a really good shot at a high grade. Um, when I was looking at the listing, the seller put in the description that they just pulled it from a a pack from 2000 Elite, and I was like, oh, that seems weird. Like, who would be opening a 2000 Don Russ or 2003 Don Russ Elite box right now? But then I was thinking about it. I'm like, well. Not really any, you know, huge rookies from that year. You had Eli, Larry Fitzgerald, all them in 04. 01, you had Breeze, Tomlinson, you know, that whole group. Reggie Wayne, 2000, obviously, you had Brady. 2002 and 2003 were definitely sort of down years, and then you get to 05 with Rodgers and, and, and that. So, so yeah, maybe those 03 boxes just aren't that much, and somebody just decided to rip one. But it does look like a pack-fresh card. The only thing is they shipped it in a um, in just a magnetic holder, but it didn't look... I didn't see any damage at all. It looks like a very, very, very clean card. So definitely excited to get that one encased. And man, that would be pretty crazy if I could pull a 10 on that one. But yeah, definitely just kind of wait and see on that. So so yeah, uh, let's get into the, the next card here um, that I picked up. So you've heard me talk about it before, but I've kind of outlined a strategy of um, you know, just kind of scaling back on, you know, buying activity overall and waiting, you know, for these types of cards, the, uh, the super fractors, the vintage magic cards, those types of things, a lot of rarity and just looking for really good prices. Um, this one was on the market for quite a while. I've, I think I've had this on my watch list for like several months and it was around like $500. And finally I just offered, um, I sent an offer for 320 uh, and they accepted it. Um, so I was, you know, obviously happy with that price. Um, and the way I was sort of thinking about it was, okay, I have like, um, I have like probably 15, 10 to 15, well, I don't know, maybe like eight to 12 uh, Francisco Lindor gold refractors out of 50. So if in theory, if I'm spending $320 on this and you know, how much, how much should a gold, you know, just a base 50 gold cost then it'd be around, you know, uh, $7. And I was like, I'm pretty confident that I can sell all these basically instantly if I post them around $20 a piece or whatever. So I just started, just started listing them. Um, and I went ahead and, um, let's see, do I still have them on here? Yeah. Um, so I list, I sold all these. So I sold this one, sold this one, sold this one, sold this one, sold this one. Uh, and I was able to generate $121 from these gold sales. So, you know, knock off about $20 or whatever shipping, maybe $30. So, so a bit, uh, but it paid for about one third uh, of this card overall, which was nice. And I still have like, you know, I think I still have like three or four left. I know I've still got this one on the market, uh, this, this logo fractor here. 
um, and a couple others. So, so yeah, that was sort of my approach on that. Um, I think it worked really well. Also, there, this card had like 50 people watching it, so obviously all those people are going to be notified when it when it sells. So hopefully that you know generates a little bit of you know FOMO, and then I can you know just immediately list these and just you know send these off to the market to help you know offset the cost of this. So so yeah, and you know just obviously 350. Uh, this is a one of one. Obviously, these are all out of fifty. So and, you know, I just want to talk. Three fifty divided by fifty is going to be seven. Obviously, you know, I know I've talked about this before. You, you lose liquidity as you, as you go up in terms of like dollar value. But to me, I'd rather have a super fractor for three hundred fifty dollars relative to like ten golds for you know two hundred bucks or whatever it is. So, so that's just kind of my approach on it. Um, you know, I don't need to own. I like all these cards, but I don't really like need to own them. You know, when I can just like get rid of them quickly and just dump that money into a card like this. So pretty happy with that. Um, as far as like overall ranking goes, um, I still have that one um, below. This Heritage is my favorite. Uh, this is currently number 25 on the list um, overall in terms of my uh, in terms of my top 100. Um, these three would be my, uh, you know, favorite Lindor cards, obviously 25, 36 and 70. You see the activity costs there. They actually the lower one here, the uh, this is out of five, and this cost about eighty dollars. So this has the lowest activity cost rating, but and it's not like you know sometimes this number has to be a little bit higher to get something you know really you know really crazy. And that's just sort of the way it is. You can't you know you can't get great amazing deals on everything, but um, but yeah. So that's kind of how that shakes out. Um, and then we uh, yeah, so. That is that is that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, I'm super under the weather, so I, you know, I honestly don't even know if I'm gonna release this video. Uh, I'm gonna listen to it and see how it sounds. If I don't sound completely ridiculous, I'll probably go ahead and post it. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely not feeling 100 percent today. So hopefully you can find some, you know, enjoyment in this. Hope everybody's doing well. You know, take care of yourselves, and we'll uh, see you again soon. All right, later.